something else I I just thought of. I just did a costume for a show called Heroic Age. Hands of people who haven't seen it. <laughs> it's a very new show that Funimation just helped uh, pop out, and they have funky spacesuits. There's lots of funky spacesuits in anime. Um, one thing that I find when you are actually sewing stuff, if you don't want to go the um, iron and patch route, if it's something you can't do that with and you actually need to use fabric, um, when you need it to be a certain shape, like there's a big letter S that I had to do for part of it, um, outline the size you want and then go about a centimeter around that and then trim that out. And then what you're going to want to do is snip right to that outline every centimeter or so and then you're going to use a lot of pins. Uh, fabric pins are a huge help with appliques and you're going to want to pin each one of those pieces in place and what you're essentially doing is you're giving it a folded under edge so that it's not going to fray. And then you very carefully sew it. When you, this is going to be really weird to explain, but when you're pushing fabric through a sewing machine, another trick I've learned is to put pins in this way so the noodle, the, so the needle will just hop over that needle and you're not going to go and chase your needles all over the room because I've done that too. But um, you're going to, what you want to do is very slowly, very carefully, kind of stitch by stitch. It's going to be agonizing, but it's going to look great. Um, sew that piece into place first and then attach it to your fabric, and that way you know it's not going to fray. Um, another really helpful thing, if you know your fabric's not going to fray too terribly much while you're working with it, is you can sew it just around the border, just cut it out the way you normally would just sew it on, and then use what's called a satin seam, which is a very wide, very close together zigzag seam, and then follow it around that way. It gives a nice, thick outline border, like if there's a black outline on something, you can do that with satin seam. And it looks really great if you practice on something else that's very similar fabric first. No, heat and bond too. Yeah. Heat and bond will also keep it from fraying because it's going to freeze all those fibers in place so they don't have a chance to fray. Um, Another reason why we don't recommend using satin for beginners because satin is just one of the most ridiculous materials to work with unless you're an expert. It's, it's difficult with photo ops too. It yes. You. It is a very fragile fabric. Um, it looks pretty, but it's not worth it. And it's, and it's inappropriate for a lot of costumes. Like if you're if you're doing a school uniform, it's going to be very basic. Um, yeah, it's going to be very basic suiting and apparel fabrics. You, it's it's one of the things I really harp on is appropriate fabrics. Um, like Kenshin here has really good sturdy fabrics, and his, his your sorry, I'm not picking on you, but your fabrics are very good, very plain, muted tones, and it's obviously fabric that in real life, if you were kicking some major booty, is going to hold up to a lot of stress, so get on you. We're living in the for months. Yes. <laughs> Easy to wash in a stream so you won't smell like a foot. If you're, if you're doing a weird, complicated shape, you want to pin it to the garment as much as possible. You might have pins every quarter inch, but if that's going to keep it from twisting around and looking funky under your sewing needle, do it. It'll be labor intensive, but it will look so much better when you're done. It's a, a lot of, of very easy mistakes are mostly about being impatient. And if you just take a little extra time and go, I might want a few extra pins here, or I might want to make sure that's absolutely straight, and that's really going to bring the entirety of your garment together. Just a few extra little things I want to harp on. <laughs> Any other questions real quick on uh, costuming before we get into some other areas? You know, bye. Yes? Since you have so much glue and pins in your clothing, her question was, how do we wash it if it's full of glue and pins? Um, hot glue, if you, if you do use what, hot glue and you do use hem tape, those are, um, those are plastic, so they're going to be waterproof. You don't want to put it on super duper high heat in your washing machine on the off chance it does loosen up. Some washing machines are very, very hot. Air uh, dry. As, as far as, um, like these are only pinned in so that these don't slide around, but I take them out when I put them on a the hanger. I just spot clean all of the pleather, all the undersides and stuff. Um, if there's any way that I can make a garment washable, I go to Great Pains to make sure it doesn't have something that's going to be fragile and come off. Like my little jacket here, I can just throw it in the washing machine and it's good to go. This is um, pinned on, so I don't have to worry about that. These, I don't really need to wash, but um, you can also just use, especially for the areas that are really hard, just like sanitizing solutions, um, like Febreze works really well, I recommend it. It'll make it smell nice too. Um, but it'll kill any of the bacteria or anything that's built up on it in your sweat. And just, you know, spray it down with some Febreze and just wipe it down a little bit around the outsides and it'll clean it about as efficiently as a washing machine will. You can even run um, 
like a hair dryer over it. You would keep the breeze at the hair dryer and heat it up a little bit, trying to kill any of the extra bacteria. But make sure it's not a material that's going to melt underneath the hair dryer. So do it gradually. Yes, and if you are making a very complicated costume, you may need to dry clean it. I did the wedding dress from Final Fantasy X, and that's not something you want to shove in a washing machine. Yes, dip. Vodka is amazing for, especially for cleaning and desanitizing because it is a sanitized solution. Be careful, anything with a high ethanol or alcohol content can alter dyed fabrics. Yeah, it can. So be careful. Also, it will ruin the finish on patent leather. Uh, like the really shiny pleather, it's going to take the finish right off of that. Um, it can alter some plastics. Do a patch test. I can't emphasize enough keeping little swatches of whatever fabric you're working with and patch testing them first. Also, if you're pre-washing your fabric, don't put five of them in the washing machine at the same time or else they're all going to come out pink because chances are you're going to find the one fabric that was not color fast. But if you're, if you're pre-washing your fabrics, do it one at a time. It's going to be time consuming, but it's going to look so much better. And once it's washed and dried, iron it before you sew with it. It's, it's going to take a while, but ironing a big flat swatch of fabric takes no time at all. The more time you spend, the better it is, most generally. So don't be afraid to take time on your costumes and make them look good. So. All right. Anything else real quick? Decide it's longer than the week before the con that you want to do something horrendously complicated. I do not recommend doing that. I have done it. It's not good. <laughs> Same here. All right. So I'm going to quickly interject, and I'm going to talk a little bit about wigs and the importance of makeup in your costumes, even if you're running around as a guy, and guys, I'm sorry, if you're cosplaying, you need to wear makeup. And it's not um, a girly thing. If, you, if, you have, if you're a guy and you worry about like, oh, I don't want to wear makeup because it's girly, go to a costume shop and get costume makeup. You won't feel as girly because you're pulling out some pretty like gory, whatever. I'm not even good with the real makeup. <laughs> most, most cosmetics that are available over the counter right now have a little bit of shimmer to them, and that's what a lot of guys are worried about. Costume right. makeup is generally completely matte. Matte is a fancy word, meaning it's not going to be shiny. So if you're if you're worried about, I don't want to do girly makeup, you just want something, a, a matte cover-up that is going to even out your complexion, um, keep you from being oily so you don't shimmer like Edward Cullen under a flashbulb. <laughs> they call us greasy nerds for a reason. You have to take precautions. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to go into a quick couple little do's and don'ts in the wig world, and I'm really uh, impressed at this convention. I have seen very, very few wigs that have made me want to scream and pull up my hair and just tear them apart and hand them a brand new wig. Um, basically, I'm going to start out by saying do not buy a $5 wig. Yeah! Don't do it. You are wasting your money, I can guarantee you. Um, it is worth the money to buy a wig. A, a good wig will generally run you anywhere between $20 and $25 um, for about a medium length wig. Um, a bunch, most of my wigs are about $35 to $50, but they're, pr they're pretty much indestructible. And um, I can attest to that. I have a wig that I did from uh, Soy Fong, and I bought it five or six years ago. Whenever, whenever Bleach first came out, I was like, oh my god, I have to be that character. Many so, eons ago. Many months ago, I'm not the whole I promise. Um, <laughs> but I have taken this wig on so many conventions, and I have been very, very mean to it because I figured it was, it was one, a one-time cosplay, and I was never going to do it again. And I would just throw it in there as my backup, and ended up doing it every single convention. Um, I didn't style it; it, it came pre-styled perfectly, and it is still styled to this day. And I spent forty-five dollars on it, and I've been very unkind to that wig. So you know, the better. Good wig fibers, great. Um, the Japanese Kaglong fiber, the best you can get, and it is worth the price. And you can get them online. Um, just if you're going to any wig shops, ask um, the people that are selling you the wig what kind of fibers they are. Do some research. There's plenty of places online that you can look up for uh, good wigs. I really like Amphigory.com. They have tons of stuff. They can style wigs for you. They have a huge selection. Um, good quality wigs are great. So I brought some examples of do nots. Um, these are just kind of your typical Halloween wigs. Um, generally, they do not have a lot of wig fiber. These are a rarity. They do. 
Um, and wig fiber and wig count, uh, fiber, uh, weft counts, um, you want to have a lot of fiber and a lot of wefts in your wigs to keep from the back of your hair showing up or anything. Um, you can tell it's a cheap wig because it'll shine and it'll kind of, it's, it's, you can tell it's like sparkling. It's very it doesn't shiny, look like hair. it's kind of starchy and stiff. Yeah, it'll be starchy and stiff and it just, it'll feel like my hair that's been bleached and dyed way too many very, times. Very fancy straw. Yes. Um, something that might be for a little bit more of the advanced cosplayer, I have an example. It's a, a half and half synthetic human hair wig. Um, these things are really amazing because you can wash them with shampoo and like human hair conditioner. And um, they keep their um, shape and you can actually style it with an iron because they actually have the human hair in them. 